up, homies? I got my boy Bog with me. We were out on a beautiful day of fall fishing. You can see all the leaves behind me. They're all brown and orange. I wanted to run through, I mentioned it in a video early on. There's a little technique I've been trying that, that's been super hot on like the Toyota series, the Bassmaster Opens when they were still happening. It actually got a guy on to the Elite Series this year. And it's something that, that I'm learning. So normally with forward facing sonar and stuff, you know, it's kind of I wouldn't say non-traditional baits, but it's kind of like finesse you know, a lot of spinning tackle, Tamiki rig, drop shot, light line spinning tackle oriented kind of presentations. So you don't get a lot of like the old school stuff with it. And what was interesting is the guy that actually qualified for the Elite Series, he was using an old school technique in kind of a new way. And I've been playing around with it and it's kind of a cool deal. And it definitely, it might not get you as many bites as using some of that finesse stuff. You know, your little swim baits, your Kitex, your Domeki rigs, your little minnow style baits, but it definitely gets you some bigger bites and fish react to it differently when you present it this way. And ironically, it's a lot like bed fishing, which I absolutely love. So hit that like and subscribe button. I'm gonna show you what I've learned about this new technique and a few tweaks that you can make. And it involves a jig. And who doesn't love a jig? So I'll run through the concept real quick. Basically, you're using a jig, much like you'd use that Tamiki rig or that, that drop shot, and you're actually pitching it basically a little beyond fish and gliding it down to them. So you're sight fishing, using forward facing, but instead of using those downsized light line finesse techniques, you're using something bigger. What I've been using, got my Bass Mafia box, is a custom jig that I actually put together. Um, I buy jigs from Tackle Warehouse, the Boss jig and it's a custom ball head that I actually make a skirt with. Basically, I take what is this boss ball head jig just like this and I make a custom skirt for it and it ends up looking like this guy right here a little tiny kind of like finesse jig not super small but what's really nice with this is it has that ball head um it has a little shorter kind of collar on the skirt i use a little o-ring it's a boss o-ring thousand times better than your standard little rubber band thing you know how you put jigs into your box and basically you go back to a month later and that that collar has completely rotted away and the skirt's just laying on the bottom of the box that doesn't happen with these the other thing too is it has an extremely stout hook on it um and like i said this is a little bigger fish technique you're not going to get nearly as many bites with um with this technique as you would like a little downsized finesse kind of straight plastic or something but you definitely get some bigger ones so i want that stouter hook to handle that you don't use a spinning rod it, it's all bait casting stuff so i'll run like a, a seven foot halo my standard um the xd3 seven foot medium heavy usually i like lighter line i really don't go to 12 but 15 you know your standard workhorse line cigar red label whatever you like to use just a standard line the heavier with the line that you go the less kind of natural penduluming effect you get so staying away from like 20 but like 15 to 17 you're pretty safe i think 15 is kind of like the juicy spot for this technique you can also use a football jig i like a little smaller compact jig but i'll tell you one other thing and this is something i need to figure out how to do one of the keys to this technique and one of the things the guys on the Bassmaster were doing they were using this green fish tackle head do you see how it has the ridges in it just like that so you guys probably saw the video I did with the Gambler FFS um, swim bait jig. And basically that swim bait jig, it has those ridges and it creates more of a plane for your, your forward facing to bounce back off of. Thus, it gives it a better, a stronger signature, a brighter kind of return. And that's hugely important. So that's why these guys are using jigs that have the ridges. I haven't found a ball head that does that. This is just a smooth ball head, but I get a pretty decent return with it. Not absolutely perfect, but pretty Pretty good. Skirt wise, I like something natural like this. This is basically pumpkin, uh, green pumpkin, and then I use a little bit of magic craw in there. It gives it that sort of every once in a while when the light hits it, you see that little iridescent reflection. Looks like a bait fish, looks like a brim, looks like a crawfish. You know, it can go a bunch of different ways. I don't think it really matters with this. I think it's more bass are opportunistic eaters. I think it's more it looks like something they'd eat. So let's talk trailers and then we're going to talk about how to fish it and how it really differs from traditional drag 
dragging a jig. There's really two trailers I like to put on this. One, a lot of guys will throw like a gliding style trailer, like a mini beaver, um, something with paddles on it. I'm not a huge fan of that. Maybe the mini beaver, but I like something either that that's kind of like this boxer craw where there's dangly appendages that don't so much kick or stop the fall of the bait, but just kind of shake and do this sort of like dancing kind of deal. If I want something bulkier, definitely that, that boxer cross style kind of shaking appendage. If I want something to glide a little bit more and I want maybe like you have more like minnows and shad around, I'll look at, this is a Domeki Stinger, but basically like a Ned bait, something a little different on the back. It causes the jig to fall a little bit quicker, but at the same time it has a sort of quiver and a sort of like a natural hunting sort of glide and dart to it. Plus once you actually get it to the bottom and that's the process we're going to talk about, you can shake the hell out of it. And that's really the key with this deal. Once you actually pitch to the fish, obviously you're going to watch the reaction, see if they follow it down, see if they engage in it, just like any kind of forward facing active target presentation. Once you see whether they're kind of following that bait down, that's when your job kicks in. I would compare this most to bed fishing. Like it's so 100%, the bites I got were just like when I'd have fish on a bed. So they'd basically kind of follow the bait down. Ironically, a lot of times it happened when I'd, I'd throw out to a group of fish, I'd drag it a little bit, and then I'd go to reel it up quick because I was going to make another cast. One or two would just follow it. Like when I was reeling it super fast and then I'd kill it, open my bell and let that bait go back down once you get it down there that's when the work kicks in and you start shaking that bait and the art is to shaking it in place and not really dragging it forward just like you would like a bait on a bed when you're bed fishing for bass but you're just doing it on forward facing you know they're down there it's usually deeper water right so you're basically shaking that slack line shaking that tip back and forth keeping that bait in place but causing it to rock i think that's why i like that ball head too or, or like a football style head because it'll rock kind of back and forth and create that sort of I don't know, that lifting or that standing action and then go back down, standing and go down. That's also why I really like that boxer crawl with the appendages because they don't so much kick because you're not dragging it, but they'll just kind of quiver and shake on the bottom or the same thing with that Ned style bait. Like I always talk to you guys about the tail, like how that tail just kind of, it, it barely moves, it just kind of quivers. And that's really the key is, is shaking it. And either one of two things is gonna happen. Those fish are gonna engage, so they're, you're actually gonna get a bite, or two, they're gonna get sick of it and get bored and just like little kids turn around and go do something else. But the bites that I've gotten, surprisingly, normally you get like on a Tamiki bite or something like that, it's, it's a lot of weight. Like it's just the rod loads up. That's why I use that spinning rod. You have that softer tip, the rod loads up and you pull, right? You got the braid backing with this they smoked it. Like literally it'd be like dong and they, they just tap just like a worm bite or like a really good jig bite. So they really committed to it and ate it. Like I said, they were bigger fish usually that engaged with this and I think that had something to do with it, but it also had to do with teasing them enough where they got so absolutely aggravated that they just closed the deal. It was almost like that kill instinct that they have versus them actually wanting to eat. And I think that's the art of it. Usually you catch those jig fish dragging because they're hungry, they're chasing, they're engage and they eat but in this situation you're really kind of targeting fish that aren't in the best of mood they're kind of neutral they're kind of like jerkbait style fish and you're you're getting them to at least give the lure like a time of day look at the jig follow the jig for a second and then you're sitting there and you're playing kind of a waiting game or like a who's more stubborn game and you're shaking it until they actually close the deal on it it's a fun little bite and definitely a different presentation than our standard like forward facing super finesse fairy wand kind of stuff and it has its place especially if you get into a slightly dingier water situation where you still have a lot of fish you're seeing in your forward facing maybe offshore we're in this creek right now and there's a bunch of fish kind of scattered on bait out in the middle but the water is dingy visibility is like a foot foot and a half and that's when that jig really shows off you get a little more bulk a little more water displacement and it's easier for those fish to track if you guys want to try this out i'll put links to all this stuff at monster bass and tackle warehouse like the ball head the skirt making stuff and even if you're not into the forward facing sonar this time of year is a great jig time of year and you can make your own custom skirts that completely match up either with your watercolor or with the the brim or the bait or whatever the forage is that's on your water and it really gives you a lot of extra confidence plus you don't have those stupid skirts always like rotting and then falling off and ending it in the bottom 
of your box versus on your jig, which absolutely drives me nuts. But hope you guys enjoyed it. Hit that like and subscribe button. If you tried this, drop any tips you got down in the comments box below. I'm going to go hang out with Bog and try to catch a few of these fall bass.